I'm doing my math right, we've got a just under 9,400 pound triple slide open range Journeyer 337 RLS uh, here at Halet RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And this is an uncommon piece. This is the kind of thing to help put open range on the map. It's a very different kind of travel trailer. It's basically what I call flat deck fifth wheel. It's extra wide, it's extra tall. Um, it has a uh, four inch wider body, six inch deeper main seating slide that we're looking at right now. So it's almost a foot bigger in the living room. Opposing living slides, excellent kitchen storage capacity, bedroom slide, two air conditioners, and just impeccably well kept inside and out. Now normally with the slides closed like they are right now, in a opposing slide living room, you'd kind of be up a creek without a paddle if you're trying to do anything except get to the bedroom or the bathroom in transit. Now obviously those things are still very easy to accomplish in this 337 open range here at Halet RV, but usually this is about the point in the video where I'd say, yep, and here's the side of the slide wall and we're done, so let's open the slides. But that is one of the things that this one does exceptionally well. Despite having that extra deep main super slide, you notice the way that this is laid out, you want to get in, you want to get to the sink, you want to walk right around that slide, you want to get to the refrigerator. Frankly, guys, you can get to just about anything without ever touching a slide out in this one. And that is just an exceptionally uncommon feature in any triple slide trailer or fifth wheel. Now, before we get too far along, there is one thing I wanted to show you folks. And I think it speaks volumes to the uh, care, character, the uh, quality of ownership this RV's enjoyed. You can see how the TV was strapped down. We can take a look down here. You can see that the uh, chairs were all strapped together so they weren't banging around and chattering in, in transit. And they didn't just turn the chairs. They also got those things strapped down. So they also similarly were not bouncing around and busting up window treatments or anything. And the reason I'm pointing this out is because there's a lot of people that won't go to those simple th extents right there. They won't do those simple extra little things to keep this RV in good working order. Um, you know, they, uh, they just tend to bounce it down the road and then they get mad when something's broken when they get there. But this is an owner who took responsibility for themselves and their product. And, uh, it, it shows because, man, this thing is in great, great shape and it is clean and in excellent condition. Now, flipping those chairs out of travel mode and into campsite destination mode, this is what you'll be afforded. And this floor plan is very popular. It continues to be popular even in the fifth wheel market today. Still called a 337 RLS, in fact. Um, the idea behind this, there's a bunch of different weird things about open range products. Uh, this is a wide body RV. It's a four inch wider body. Our main seating slide over here is six inches deeper. So this thing has a nearly one foot wider living room than a traditional travel trailer. And additionally, you see how it has this big vaulting north-south roof sweep. If you look at the back of that super slide over the kitchen, and then you look at the front, you can see how the roof tapers up. This thing goes to over seven foot tall at the apex of the trailer, which gives you that big, open, expansive feel. And it is really one of the earliest generation, what I like to call flat deck fifth wheels, where it's... It has all the features. It's a part-for-part -part match with the fifth wheel, but it's all contained on one flat deck. We do have a hide-to-bed sleeper sofa over here, and you're going to find that all the windows open for ventilation. Another benefit of being extra tall is they have more room for taller cabinets above your seating. Now, those chairs are easily free-floating. Uh, previous owner put them on these little glide pads so they won't rip up your carpet when you scoot around, which is just, it's, it's funny how inexpensive, simple, cheap, and effective that is. Um, easy lift and lower, uh, you know, drop shades for all of your windows here. And over here, this is kind of not a, this is sort of what I call a three-quarter slide, where it's a, a entertainment and dining slide. It doesn't need to be as big as like a sofa dinette super slide, kind of in between somewhere, but beautiful hardtop uh, on this table. And this is definitely aftermarket. That was not a factory item. Uh, it It's it's very sharp. I, I like it when you can see wood grain. I like that natural sort of look there. And maybe it doesn't match the rest of the hardwood type stuff like around those chairs, but man, does it have a look for sure. Now over here uh, in that entertainment center, I like a corner entertainment like this because it's always easy viewing. Uh, I knew I'd forget to take that strap off there, but whatever. You get the idea. It was strapped down in transit. Now, 
Couple things. The previous owner of this RV was some kind of electrical engineering wizard. Uh, did a lot of boondock camping. Had uh, some solar stuff put on here. Some inversion things. That's what this is right here. It's kind of a, uh, a, a charge monitor, if you will. Um, so there's some extra hardware, basically, that's been installed on this RV after the fact, and it all seems to be done very well. Owner had a pair of uh, six volt batteries on it at one point, so if you are looking to do some boondocking, this one has kind of been pre-prepped and set and ready to do all that. And it's a small thing, but it's an awesome thing. I love that extra window right there next to the entry door. It really helps kind of complete the look and feel of a larger, more spacious living area. Now, above your kitchen here, kind of doubling as a skylight, but you do have a max air power vent fan up here. So if you are going to cook up a storm, you do have that heat exhaust on it. But speaking of cooking, this thing has a tremendous kitchen. It was really... There's a lot of reasons that I like open range RVs, and there's a lot of reasons that we became an open range RV dealer here at Halid RV. But their kitchens, that was uh, among the top of the list uh, features that they put together here, because they put together uh, just a mean kitchen. And it starts up top here. What I like is they didn't just give you big cabinets, because remember, this is where the trailer is tallest here in the kitchen. So that is giving you more overhead kitchen space than really any other trailer made during this time was able to offer. Uh, and by having a shelf in it, they've even doubled it further. So we've got hardwood cabinet doors with uh, the uh, raised panel inserts as well as hidden hinge cabinetry to kind of complete that look and pocket screwed styles. But also notice, easy reach appliance outlets on either side of that sink. And I love the symmetry of the kitchen wall right here. And when you're standing at the sink, it's got such a good look. I also like how you've got drawers to the floor and a dedicated wastebasket space, which is something that is just super, super handy. Now over here, anytime storage comes to me, instead of me going to the storage, I'm a happy camper. Kind of, no pun intended there, but you, you get the idea. You don't have to get on your hands and knees to get to it. And that is an eight cubic foot fridge freezer uh, with a bonus drawer below it. And you couldn't do that without a little bit taller slide, which you couldn't do without a little bit taller camper. And this is all nice, but you're kind of looking at it and you're going, yeah, but where's my pantry space? And you might not realize that's kind of what the entertainment center is doing. It could easily double as a pantry as well. Now, the previous owner doesn't appear to have used it that way. Little entertainment uh, shelf organizer in there. And this yellow and black box, that is actually a uh, inverter that was added to this. My guess is uh, he enjoyed watching TV while he was boondocking off grid. And you, you know, have to have an inverter to be able to power that because that's normally a 110 household appliance only, not 12 volt. From there, moving forward, we are going to walk past an entry area coat closet, and your command center is all right down here. All your controls and stuff are easy to reach. Bathroom is very cool. This is a bathroom arrangement that you really couldn't pull off uh, in a standard 8-foot wide body coach. Now remember, we are extra tall right here. So this is uh, this is going to be ideal for people who are like, if you're six and a half feet tall and then some, you're going to be comfortable here. Now, when we get outside, you're going to notice, but I can give you a sneak preview here. There are Max Air vent covers installed over these uh, vents so that you can leave those open. Because again, for boondocking use, you do want the ability to get that extra airflow in there. And there are mirrors just all over over this bathroom. You've also got an extra large sink in here and plenty of floor space with no heat vents right in the floor where you could drip into it. Not that That's really not the big deal people think it is, but I know a lot of people get spooked by it. Now you just don't have to worry about it. Porcelain foot flush stool with all kinds of room. Speaking of all kinds of room, you have all kinds of room to uh, be able to get dressed in here. You also have all kinds of room to store stuff in here. And this is again one of those features that makes me call this a flat deck fifth wheel. First of all, it's just really awesome that we have all this like linen storage space in here or personal space, shampoos, whatever you want it to be. This could be a little bit of anything. But if you notice down here, inside the lower cabinet on the right hand upper side, there's washer dryer hookups. This is a zero degree rated washer dryer prepped travel trailer. And especially in 2010 when this was new, that was not normal. Now if you just remove the lower cabinet styles and cabinet doors, you could put a combo unit in there. But if you felt like it, you could actually remove some of the upper sections as well, and you could put a stackable unit in here if you were so inclined. So, just sort of depends on what you're looking for. Now, a second air conditioner was installed here, so this does have maximum cooling power that was available to this model when it was uh, new. 
60 by 80 queen bed. Um, in today's market, you could probably get something like this with a king, uh, like in our Rockwood. This is a very close match, by the way, for a Rockwood 8329 SS that we have here at Halet RV. Very, very similar layouts. Um, and the uh, Rockwood also would throw the second air conditioner in there. So um, if you kind of like what you see here, but you're looking for something maybe a little bit newer, well, we have that too. Or if you're looking for something big, well kept, and with a used price tag, we got that too, at least for now. Uh, now, we have a wide body wardrobe closet up front. Because this is a wider coach, you do have more space there. And again, you can see previous owner updated, upgraded, added some stuff to it. Put a handy little swing out TV here in the bedroom. You'll see that there's nice storage space below that. And we also have a very generous extra large dresser right at the foot of the bed space. Now we've obviously transitioned from outside to inside. When this RV came to us, as it was being traded in on the way here, the owner unfortunately suffered a flat tire and it caused some skirting damage on the other side. You're not going to see any of that though, because we fixed it. We replaced it. We took care of all of it. Uh, now up front here you see this very interesting nose cap. Remember that this is a wide body camper. Well, it sticks out enough that on a conventional RV you know, construction methodology, you wouldn't really be able to turn very tightly and have good clearance. So they came up with this sort of cutaway nose cap. Really, it looks a lot like a fifth wheel. And that's always kind of what these open range trailers were and really still are today, is a flat deck fifth wheel. Anything in their wide body series really qualifies for that description very well. Power tongue jack up front. Um, we're going to get up on the roof uh, later, actually, as we go around this thing. A couple things I want to point out here. You can see the bed slide windows doing a great job here, uh, giving you some cross breeze across your headboard. Notice, too, that they have a sealed piano hinge on their baggage doors to keep the weather from getting on those hinges and causing them to get sprung. Now, the owner, for security's sake, replaced the standard 751 key lock here for what I'm calling a 721 lock because the combination on this lock is 721. I'm sure it can be changed. I don't know how to do it, so I thought I'd just give you the code. Underbelly, of course, enclosed, heated, insulated, open range for years, has done a very good job of being a near part-for-part -part match on their travel trailers as their fifth wheels, which does give this that uh, you know, excellent hot, cold temperature variance rating. And part of that is also the uh, sort of enclosed docking center that we have going on right here, kind of like a fifth wheel. Now we've got her plugged in the shop here currently. Now these tires, uh, you know, uh, new tire, and this skirting here was basically all replaced. So in a sense, you've got a lot of newer parts on here than the RV originally had. But had I not mentioned it, I bet you never would have known it because Zach, the guy that we had on the job here, he is a guy that's been turning wrenches longer than I've been in this business. Actually, when I was just a young kid, when I was 18 years old and got my first car, Zach here at Halet RV uh, was the uh, guy who actually was, uh, you know, often changing oil and doing service on my vehicle. So he's a, a fellow that's been around a long time, knows his way around these things. The uh, ladder lets you clamber right up onto the roof there so you can take care of all your seasonal maintenance and upkeep. We'll get up there in just a minute. Now, I always try to be fair whenever I put these videos together. The uh, rear ABS bumper, as it were, which is mostly just decorative. Unfortunately, a little bit of the surface coating that has been exposed to the sun. You can see a little bit of flaking here. It's cosmetic. It's not perfect, but we're also not uh, trying to ask blood money for this camper, and we do try to be fair on things when we see them come through. Now remember, in addition to that wider body, the slide that we're looking at over here is 42 inches deep as compared to the industry standard 36. So that's where you're getting a six inch deeper slide, a four inch wider body. Again, nearly a foot wider in the living area, and they did not mess around when it came to windows. There are uh, there, I mean, this is, this is maximum glass, ladies and gentlemen. She is glassy and classy. <laughs> overall, you know, a couple little bumps here and there, but overall, the decals, the skin looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to squeeze between here. The, uh, the other tires, all the wheels, everything looked good. Again, it was just that one had a little hiccup. And, uh, you know, they're Goodyear radials. It's not like they were cheap China bombs or anything like that. Uh, the owner just caught some debris on the way here, you know. Uh, they were very good about always keeping their tire pressure checked. They always, uh, you know, they, they did everything right. They just caught a chunk of something on the highway and they lost a tire. But, again, that was our problem, not yours. We took care of it. So, there you have it, guys. Whether you need hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, my God. No, I told you. We're going to go up on the roof. Let's do that right about meow. Now up top here, takes just a few seconds to determine a couple things. First of all, 
It's been well kept, it's been well maintained. It could use a hose bath here, but it's coming into fall at the time this has been traded in. It's been out all summer, that makes sense. The second thing is, there were solar panels installed in this. This was uh, not made solar ready, it's solar equipped. And there's also a charge controller inside. So if you are looking to do some off-grid boondocking use, or if you just want to make sure your batteries are always going to be topped off, there was a lot of money added into this RV. You can see the max air covers were added, the second air conditioner was added. A lot of time, money, and effort went into this RV, not only to get it in a really sharp state and condition, but to keep it there. You know, it wasn't neglected, it wasn't abused. I think this is something that someone's going to be really happy with. There's a, there's a lot of money in aftermarket upgrades on this one that someone's going to want that you don't have to pay for. So, whether it is hitching pieces, parts, trades, finance, truck and trailer package, deals, RV delivery, and everything in between, we do it all at Halet RV. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.